Hello, everyone. Today, I wanted to talk about the reported Switch 2 leaks that happened around September 18th. Or more specifically, I wanted to talk about the reaction to them, because the reaction is worth a deeper analysis than the hardware leak itself. Quickly, I'll catch everyone up if you happen to miss it. But the leak itself was pretty straightforward. We saw a glimpse of the Switch 2's PCB, which is the main board where all the important guts of the machine lie, and reportedly the person who did the leak had files that showed real examples of in-development Switch 2 hardware. That gave us an example of the shape, size, and general look of the Switch 2. Then, shortly after that, Chinese YouTuber XNZ, who specializes in 3D printing and modeling, made a mock-up of Switch 2 based off of those same files. Her video is pretty cool because it gives us a tangible look at what the real scale of the device could be. Despite all that, if these leaks are true, they don't actually seem that interesting to me. Which is kind of crazy, because isn't seeing a company's next console a huge deal? Well, in this case, not really, because what we saw was basically a bigger Switch. That's it. If these files were real, in-development Switch 2 hardware, even if they were out of date by a year or so, which some people claim, they paint a picture that the next-gen Switch successor is very simple. It's a straightforward console designed to deliver a better version of the Switch's hybrid concept. And I think that's great, and exactly what Nintendo should be doing. I also think it's exactly what most people were expecting. But expecting something and seeing it with your own two eyes are different things. And I noticed that some people came away from these leaks a bit disappointed, because to them, the Switch 2 looked too safe, too boring. There were some videos mentioning this, but I also saw comments on social media and forums that had a bit of a wait, that's it reaction as well. And I'm not blaming them. Nintendo has a history of being bold and surprising us. We gave you DS, a new Game Boy, and new games to play on them. And now you say, you want a revolution? Well, we've got one. So if you've grown up as a fan of Nintendo, you can't help but expect surprises. But I think some of these people are missing the point. Put simply, if the Switch 2 hardware is boring, that's a good thing. It's important to not lose perspective. It has been, and always will be, all about the games. Nintendo themselves have said this for years. Over the years, I know you've heard a lot of Nintendo people say, we're all about the game. Well, guess what? We are. And the Nintendo Switch has allowed Nintendo to bring their handheld and console development together so they can bring more games to one device. And since Nintendo has a large variety of first-party system sellers, this has led to over 140 million Switches sold. And it'll certainly end up over 150 million when it's all said and done. The Switch was the perfect device for Nintendo because it allowed them to make whatever kind of games they wanted. It had the Joy-Cons, so if they wanted to still make some motion control inspired games, such as say ARMS or Ring Fit Adventure, continuing their Wii legacy, they could do that. If they wanted to make smaller scale games, you know, traditionally the kind of games they made exclusively for their handhelds and not their home consoles, like let's say the recent 2D Zelda Echoes of Wisdom, they could do that. And then of course, when they wanted to make the large scale games, like the 3D Zeldas and Xenoblades of the world, they could do that too. Basically, the Switch allowed all of Nintendo's ideas to come to life, and they didn't have to decide what to make exclusive to a handheld and what to make exclusive to their console. And importantly, when it comes to hardware, they weren't forced to come up with a gimmick to be the selling point. When Nintendo had a console and handheld split, they had pressure to differentiate them and come up with a reason why you needed both. But the Switch's selling point is that you can get all of Nintendo's games in one place and play them however you want. And it's for that reason that I think it makes complete sense for the Switch 2 hardware to be a bit boring. The Switch 2 shouldn't rock the boat with a gimmick that supports certain types of games but harms others. It should be a device that allows every type of Nintendo game to be made while allowing people to play how they want. And since that's what the Switch already is, the idea that the Switch 2 is just a more powerful Switch makes sense. Basically, Nintendo already figured out what the X factor should be for their device. 
So when they reveal their next console, it's naturally going to be a little less bold. Personally, I remember when Nintendo revealed the Wii's code name at E3 2005. It was the Revolution. And yeah, that name has a pretty serious meaning. A lot of console development code names don't mean much for the final device, but Nintendo was claiming their console would cause a gaming revolution, which obviously was a big claim. So it's not that I think Nintendo has gotten boring, I think it's that they don't need to cause a revolution. They still experiment with weird toy-like things like Nintendo Labo and Mario Kart Circuit, but as I've said before, the Switch itself allows those experiments to be made the same way it allows standard games to be made. That's why they don't need any hardware that's too out there in and of itself. We've also seen Nintendo have big misses before, like the Wii U. Now, I was a proud owner of a launch Wii U, but with only 13.5 million units sold, it was obviously a mega flop. And I'm sure Nintendo doesn't want to ever risk having a big miss like that again. So when you have a concept that you know sells like the Switch, it makes sense to play it straight. But does that mean the Switch 2 itself is guaranteed to be as big as the Switch? Well, no. Playing it safe, I believe, makes sense, but it doesn't guarantee the same sales. I would argue Nintendo's two safest successor devices ever were the Super Nintendo and the Game Boy Advance. The original NES sold just shy of 62 million units, whereas the SNES did about 49 million. The Game Boy did 118 million, whereas the GBA did 81.5 million. Now, of course, there's a lot of different factors at play historically, such as Nintendo releasing the Game Boy Color to extend the OG Game Boy's life, but the point stands, the GB and SNES were extremely safe systems that delivered the same kind of device as the previous system, just with more power under the hood. And they did not sell as well as their predecessors, despite being beloved. Even with that being the case, no one would argue they were a mistake. They were successful platforms with a lot of hit games. But as we saw with their handheld line, they did eventually decide to go in a bold new direction after the GBA with the Nintendo DS. So, there's no guarantee that just making a more powerful Switch-like device is the best thing to do forever. Maybe there won't be a Switch 3, and they'll need to come up with a gaming revolution once again. But for now, making the Switch 2 be a bit more simple, Super Nintendo or GBA-like successor to the OG Switch makes complete sense. There's one other factor to consider, and that is Nintendo's properties are literally bigger than ever. With the massive software sales explosion on Switch, Nintendo now has more fans of their games than ever before. Think about it, Mario Kart's always been big, but after Mario Kart 8 Deluxe doing over 62 million copies sold, when Nintendo delivers a new exclusive next-gen Mario Kart on Switch 2, it'll be a bigger system seller than it already was because there's a bigger audience anticipating a new entry. Animal Crossing had a big audience before, but after its 45 million sales breakout, it now has new fans that will be hyped for a sequel. Now, don't get it twisted. I'm not saying the next game in the series will sell as well, considering those numbers are insane, and it released at a very specific time, but it does mean the IP has grown to a new level of awareness, and the sales floor has been raised. So just like the Switch 2 doesn't have to match the Switch 1 sales to be a big success, the same is true for its games. But if they sell more than all gens prior to Switch, that would prove they have elevated their status and make them permanently more valuable. Also, don't forget things like the Super Mario Bros. movie being a billion dollar blockbuster, their universal theme park, Super Nintendo World continuing to expand, as well as the recent Nintendo Museum opening up. Nintendo has really done a good job increasing their relevance to people of all ages, so interest in Nintendo Switch 2 and its games will be extremely high, which is another reason not to make an unforced error with the hardware. K-I-S-S, -S. keep it simple stupid, it's an old phrase that works here, and I really think Nintendo will be able to ride a simple next-gen console to great success, even if some people might find that a bit boring. So that's my thoughts on Nintendo Switch 2, and what I feel is the right path for the hardware to follow. What do you think? Do you want a Switch just with more power, or do you want to have some surprise in store that differentiate it more? Please feel free to leave a comment down below. Also, if you like videos like this, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. I'm a small channel and it really helps at least a few people to see my videos and it lets me know what kind of videos to make. With that, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.